Shkoyach. Um, yeah. Just, just uh, before uh, Rabbi Leitner comes in on the deal hall, um, uh, I will be launching the Lunch and Learn series that is beginning today at, I think it's one o'clock, and I'll be sending the link out on the WhatsApp group um, a little bit later. Um, but we will be looking at continuing the conversation and the theme from the past and reflections on Chief Rabbi Lord Sachs. Rabbi Leitner. Okay, good morning, everyone. Morning. Um, morning. Okay, so we're going to continue with the, in the, uh, the essay or the uh, Chiba, the response of Rabbi Asher Weiss in, in this book, looking at the scope and the, the, um, of the, of the uh, obligation to come to Shul to Dabba and to Dabba with the Minyan. So, having gone through a number of other examples of where he compares uh, different responsibilities. Uh, which have to be done at the same time, and how you work out which one takes precedence. He notes that um, even though the language employed by the Rambam, by Maimonides, he said that a person uh, needs to uh, join themselves together with a community, uh, Rabbi Weiss notes that the Rambam could have used many other words instead. He could have said, you are obligated to join with the community. He could have said, the most important thing to do is to join with the community. But the fact that he said you need to do it um, shows that uh, there are limitations to the scope of this obligation. And Rabbi Weiss compares this with the language which the Rambam uses, the Gemara uses actually, about benching Gomel, about, uh, uh, about saying that bracha, if unfortunately one needs to do so, which ideally you would say with the minyan. But on the other hand, if you are uh, going somewhere where there's no chance of getting a minyan anywhere at all, uh, you fly on a, um, a, uh, a weather reconnaissance plane to Antarctica, uh, to the, the, weather re, the weather reading station in Antarctica, there's no minyan. There's a packet of kettle chips with a KLBD logo on, you'll be happy. Okay, then um, uh, there's no minyan. So what do you do in such a case? Well, you can still say Brukat um, even without a minyan in those, those circumstances. So therefore, Rabbi Weiss, quoting from the tour and other medieval sources says, that needing to be with a minyana by extension in the shul is something which is lechat chila. It's something which if you can do it, of course you should, but it shouldn't stop you praying. And it might even be that there are other priorities which mean that you shouldn't do it because there are other things that need to be done at that particular time. Now, that's not the only way of understanding the passage in the Talmud, but this is the way the Rabbi Weiss develops at this particular point. And therefore he quotes the Magen Avraham. Uh, Rabbi Avraham Gombin, one of the great rabbis of the 17th century in the early 18th century. The commentary on the first part, the Orachayim part of the Shulchan Aruch is extremely important. But he says that when a, a person is, um, uh, is taken up uh, with their work or other essential things they need to do, then they are exempt from, from going to Daven with the community. How much the more so we can add today in the case that we have where we're unable to come to Shul. Uh, we're unable to gather together with other people. And he says that, uh, as to others after him, that particularly when people are going to work, which itself is a mitzvah to, to work and to earn a living, um, that that pushes away to feel love with people. That means there's no, there is no overriding obligation to have a communal prayer together as a, as a tibor. So Rabbi Weiss notes that given that this is the case, how much more so if there is any threat to life or any danger at a time of a plague, uh, that a person is certainly uh, not obligated to come together to govern in a community, and they should um, pray in a place which is safe, uh, safe for them to do so. So therefore, coming back to the beginnings of our discussion, it would seem certainly if you have a, a place at home which is quiet, you can pray, and it's a regular place that you pray in at home, etc., then that is a very appropriate thing to do um, whenever you need to pray at home, and certainly in, in these uh, these circumstances now, in particular, it's a place where you might sit down and, and, and learn uh, at least a little bit every day as well. Um, uh, and Rabbi Weiss notes that it's important, given this, that um, a person uh, should try and make sure that they get as many of the benefits of davening in the community, even when they're davening by themselves. Of course, it's not always easy to do that. How, how would we do that? relating to Zoom or other things, that we'll start looking at tomorrow. And the next part of his essay, which is entitled, if you are davening without a minyan, is it better that two people are davening in some way together, be it in the same place or be it via Zoom? How, how does that help in this particular circumstance? So that's, that's all being one is what we'll pick up tomorrow. Have a great day. Okay. Uh, Go off, Rabbi Leitner. Sorry. I'm good.